Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Sky. This is another episode of the Android game in C++ series and in this video we are going to get started with our actual game and the game we are creating here is going to be a clone of the classic breakout game like the one that was on Atari. It was a uh, pretty it's a pretty simple game and also a pretty good game and a kind of fun game which you can try out to you know learn about uh, how this kind of works and it's a perfect project for a beginner so we are going to get started with that in this video but of course for that we'll need to actually draw game graphics uh, game graphics to our screen uh, however we do not actually have any rendering functionality or anything of that sort in our game currently so for that i'm going to go under here this uh, you know folder view uh, you know project view and i'm going to go under cpp and then right click here hit new and we are going to create a new C++ class. Let's just call it, uh, for example, renderer. And this is going to handle all of our rendering code. It's going to be a basic 2D renderer, uh, nothing too complex. And in CMake list, we are going to go here uh, in CMake list and add renderer.cpp to it. So renderer.cpp, and then we are going to save that. And uh, if I open up renderer.cpp, you can see it says sync now and we are going to just do it and it should now work uh, anyways let's go ahead and remove that code go under render.h and i'm going to remove this line here and now for the actual renderer class here uh, so we are going to have this contain a bunch of functions first of all let's start with the basic one which is going to be just a initialization function now this init function will initialize the OpenGL context and uh, in here we'll use to have a diff uh, we'll have to use another uh, version of OpenGL a kind of simpler stripped down version of OpenGL that does a few things differently known as EGL or OpenGL ES uh, you know we are going to be using that so for this uh, what we'll need to do is uh, first of all let's just copy this line here and uh, uh, in order to initialize the display and stuff we'll need to have a uh, pointer or reference or whatever to a android app so we'll we'll just copy this go under renderer and paste this here so yeah you can see that we have got that and that is pretty awesome so we are going to uh, you can see it's giving us a bunch of errors uh, about including but don't worry once it uh, the sync is complete it should stop giving those errors it it is kind of stopped giving that error as you can see and now we need to create an implementation of this function inside of like uh, uh, you know render.cpp so we can uh, well it is actually just syncing right now you can see it's still doing the sync but i'm going to go here and uh, uh, we're going to create it manually because the ide does not very well uh, work very well and it's syncing so let's just wait for that to happen and let's create a android a function in call here call init uh, which is going to take an android app android underscore app uh, pointer to an android app known as app so once we take that and this function will basically initialize the display and do a bunch of stuff like set the OpenGL settings, create an OpenGL context, set up a display and stuff of that sort. So we are going to get started with its implementation in a second but first of all let's go under game here and uh, in like private we are going to create a renderer called just to renderer. So it's we are going to have an instance of this renderer inside of our game. Uh, you can see it's uh, not uh, being able to do that so let's say alt enter and hit uh, uh, actually no uh, we are not going to delete that field we are going to go ahead and uh, include renderer.h after we have done that you can see uh, we should be able to go under game.cpp under bin it, uh, begin we are going to go here and say renderer and we are going to call the initialize function on the renderer and of course we are going to pass our app here so th yeah that's going to initialize our renderer pretty awesome so yeah you could should be able to see that uh, here here of course we are currently not doing anything so we need to actually initialize the OpenGL context and stuff inside of this file things we need to initialize before we do any of that we'll need to include the header egl slash egl.h which should be provided by android so once we have included that header uh, we can go under here and there are four variables we'll create one is an egl display called uh, uh, display well let's just call it display and uh, the other is going to be an EGL config called config which is going to represent our configuration an EGL surface called surface and an EGL context called context these are the four things that we actually need to initialize now uh, 
we have got this in now let's go on to renter.cvp and here i have already added some code here the first thing is this array of egl attributes each of this is of type egl int which is similar to like a standard integer and we have got uh, these are called attributes and these are basically some attributes so for the renderable type we set it to es2 bit uh, because we want uh, uh, you know uh, OpenGL ES version 2 and then we set the surface type to window blue size green size and red size to 8 and depth size to 24 and uh, uh, this basically you can of course modify these if you want to have something different but generally these are pretty good attributes for a 2D game and you can just uh, you know copy paste these into your code if you like so uh, you can see here we set our display to EGL get display so now we need to initialize the display so we just get the display and the display we get we just say get the default display for the actual id so we get the default display and uh, then we try to initialize that display so we need to uh, try to initialize our egl with that display and uh, uh, we pass it our display uh, and we just pass null pointers for the major and minor versions so we just let it do whatever it likes and then we just uh, if that is equal to G egl false which means it failed we just say fail to initialize ETL display and we uh, tell it whatever error code and the error code we can get at any time by using ETL get error so that's pretty simple now for the next part the next thing we need to initialize is the surface and config first of all configuration we are going to create an egl int to call num config which will store the number of configurations we have got so we will just call egl choose config with our display and the second list is going to be our attribute and then we are going to pass it uh, a pointer or address of our config followed by the size which is going to be one and then we just pass it the address of our num config which and it will store the total number of configurations it found uh, in here so according to these attributes it will get a number of uh, configurations and we can just get it get them here by saying egl get config with this config size now the problem is that uh, we are not going to actually get into too much about what config we want we are going to just choose the first config that matches we are not going to go into very deep so we are going to just choose the first config for this we just pass in one uh, if you want to choose a specific config you'll have to first of all pass null pointer here to get the number of configs then read in all of those config into an array of configs uh, configurations and then you'll have to go over each of those and choose whatever one you like and then you'll have to actually call choose config on that so it's going to be a bit complicated for now we just call egl choose config and we pass our config and choose the first available config so that's pretty cool now for the surface we are going to just call egl creates window surface because this is a window as i said before so this is like egl surface type is egl window so we are going to create a window surface now it requires a display first of all followed by our config this is followed by this is followed by the app window and then in the end we pass null pointer for the attribute list because we don't really want to have any other attributes here we we'll just pass in null so after we've got if the surface is equal to egl no surface then we just uh, give an error and log it to the output saying that uh, uh, well it failed to create that surface so that's a problem so we'll just uh, copy and paste that but we'll say fail to create egl surface with the error code we'll just get it similarly so we have got our surface here now for the context we'll create another array of uh, attributes but this is going to be the context attributes the only thing we are going to set is the context client version which we are going to set to 2 and in the end we're just going to pass egl none do not we also pass egl none at the end of this so once we have done that we can say context is equal to egl create context and first thing we'll need to pass is our display followed by config uh, 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 and for the mm, share context we are not going to do that since we are not doing any context sharing we are only creating one context and then we'll pass in our context uh, attributes that we just created here uh, afterwards we can say egl make current because uh, creating a context is not enough you also make the need to make that context the current one for which we'll uh, pass in display and there are two surfaces one is the drawing one is the reading one we are going to pass the surface for both of those same surface that we created and in the end we are going to pass context that we just created and this is actually going to make that context our current context on this thread and that's going to allow us to actually make sure any OpenGL calls we make is made to this context and it's displayed on the correct surface and everything so with that we have initialized our four things pretty well but if the we are going to check if the context is no context and if that's the case we are going to give an error 
so yeah that's pretty awesome now we are going to call the egl clear color method to set our the color we want to clear the window with you can see it gives an error you need to go up here and make sure you include gles2 slash gl2.h because we are using uh, you know uh, egl2 so we are going to do that and uh, now we are going to go under renderer.h and in here we are going to add two more functions first is going to be begin update and the other is going to be end update now uh, in the begin update function uh, we are going to do something pretty simple so let's uh, just generate it here and then we can say uh, well we are also going to first of all generate the end update and then in the begin update we are going to basically gl clear the color so we are going to clear it with the gl clear color buffer bid now there are other things we need to do in this function but those are not necessary right now so we'll leave them out now for the end update we'll just say if egl swap first so we'll swap the buffers which means this is like double buffer so we need to swap the buffers so we'll just swap them and uh, with this function and we need to provide it with display and surface if that's equal to egl false it means it failed so we'll say egl error while swapping buffers and we'll say error code and we'll get it using gl get error actually not gl get error that's different egl get error so yeah that's pretty awesome that's all of the initialization stuff out of the way of course you need to ensure that in your game you're actually calling these functions because we created them here but we actually need to call them inside of game.cpp so when we open up our game uh, in the update you will call begin update and then you'll call end update at the end and any drawing we need to do we'll do between these two so that's that's pretty cool now uh, that does mean that we have got uh, our initialization pretty much out of the way and we can test this to see if we get a screen but of course we won't be able to test it really that much because we don't currently know uh, drawing anything that's going to cause a lot of effort to actually go about right we'll have to write a shader and stuff but for now we can just uh, set the color of the clear color to something like a yellow color and see whether we get a yellow screen or not so I'm going to just hit the play button here uh, uh, do not mind the flickering this is a problem with my emulator it should not occur on an actual device so this is not a problem with our code it's just a bug in the emulator so if I open up the panel you can see that it says uh, uh, well I actually ran it twice that's why it says entering Android main and then initializing window and you but you can see that it does not actually give any errors uh, or anything about uh, doing creating or doing windows and we get a yellow screen here so that means our code is working so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video i'll see you in the next one in which we'll make uh, uh, start making you know our uh, engine display stuff like sprites and other stuff of that sort so that's going to be pretty awesome stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and bye